Slavery and fascism are the ugly faces of ancient and modern politics. But instead of one powerful dictator, some societies buckle under coalitions of hard, like-minded troopers. The kingdom of the Hamadrius begins in the deserts of the Arabian Peninsula. Here, these male desert baboons are true troopers to the cause, with each adult male retaining exclusive rights over a harem of females, only negotiation can keep the peace in this macho society. Power rests in the hands of the few in Hamadria society, and exclusively in the hands of the male. Like in many human societies, these desert baboons on the Arabian Peninsula believe a woman's place is in the home. In ancient Greece, Aristotle opined, women are without authority, less capable than men of leadership, so they should be excluded from the affairs of state. Here, a single male leader dominates a group of females, exercising exclusive rights over his harem. Females endure constant surveillance. Their movements are severely restricted. If a female strays too far, the male leader intervenes promptly. Anything goes to remind the fairer and weaker sex of her place. Intimidation and brute force are meted out without ceremony. A bite on the neck. A tug of the tail. All's fair in love and war. When a female is on heat, the noose tightens even further. This female is kept on a very short leash. Her only option is to court favor with the male and submit to the unwavering laws of the harem. Social hierarchy dictates the female with the highest status stays closest to her master. If she's unhappy with her lot, she runs the risk of being stolen by another male. When a female does fly the coop, she's fair game for frustrated suitors. The stakes are high. Everyone is watching. Claiming a loose female and forming your own harem can only enhance male social status. And status is always up for grabs, no matter how brutish the behavior. But as the ancient Chinese philosopher Confucius cautioned, when anger arises, think of the consequences. Even in this macho environment, patience is a virtue. A passive bystander can seize his chance while the others fight it out. On the face of it, baboons seem to have a one-track mind, building and preserving their harems with brawn, not brain. Scientific surveys now cast Hamadria's society in a more generous light. A young, single baboon can integrate peacefully into a harem, biding his time patiently before forming his own and acquiring the status of leader. A successful young pretender builds up trust with the dominant male and his females before acceding to the ultimate prize. Sexual impulse is a double-edged sword. It foments conflict, but also instills harmony. Despite their fierce canine teeth and muscular build, desert baboons use a network of male alliances to keep the peace. Clans of two or more harems band together. These bands, in turn, form troops. Cooperation and negotiation are the building blocks of the Hamadrius political order. And well before Machiavelli told the Prince of Italy how to keep political power, baboons were well versed in one of his cardinal principles, never plunder another's property or take his woman by force.
In spite of stiff competition, the rule is generally respected. Troops march to the same tune. Discreet signals ensure rules are crystal clear. A reassuring pat on the back. Everyone knows where they stand. Peace abroad means peace inside the harem. Their harems may function in much the same way as polite human society, where the occasional burst of aggressive behaviour between males is tempered by respect for the property of others. In this case, female desert baboons. World away from the repressive desert harems are the permissive playgrounds of the African jungle. The veil has no place in this society. Female bonobo chimps in the Democratic Republic of Congo offer themselves up as sexual favours to any interested male. Bonobos of all ages enjoy free love. This must be male paradise. There's no catch. Wait a minute, she wants a snack. And so does she. It's all part of a deal. This is the deal. Unlike the possessive baboons of the Arabian Peninsula, male bonobos do not covet females as sexual trophies to be guarded at all times. Sex is traded freely for food and to avert conflict. It's a political language that fosters social harmony in heterosexual, homosexual and incestuous combinations. Like humans, they even do it facing each other. Bonobos make love, not war, in an egalitarian, free society, much like the hippie movement of the 1960s. Sex is not just about reproduction. It's about appeasement, harmony, and free trade. Fancy emigrating?